talk about what we eat, about what we like to eat, about what we choose to eat, uh, then we should also talk about we, what we don't eat. Okay, so um, social identities, social cultural identities emerge by positive aspects, what we eat, but also by a sort of negative aspect, what we don't eat. And this is fundamental to define who we are. This is the, I show you the structure of the chapter. We have uh, uh, four sections two focuses and a glossary that is, mm, was prepared by Simon Stano. Um, the uh, section uh, are these, you can see there, from diet to dietetics, that aims at show the general purpose of the chapter. Um, the second section is uh, dedicated to the evolution of dietetics, the third is about nutritionism, that is the current paradigm of dietetics. And the last one regards food fashions and trends, because uh, uh, this is one of the most important issues about eating and about dietetics. Okay. So, the first section of the chapter uh, promotes a sort of mental shift. So it means to move from a strict sense, a strict meaning of the word diet, to a broader meaning of this word. Uh, from diet as a restrictive regimen, to dietetics as a way of, to regulate ourselves. Regulatory regimen implies that dietetics regards food choices, but not only. When we usually think of uh, uh, diets, we usually uh, think of these kind of things. Slimming diet, weight loss, uh, reduction of quantity, selfism, science doctor, calories, intolerance, and so on. But this kind of imagery of dietetics is not enough for a deeper reflection of dietetics. If we look back to its etymological definition, we find exactly uh, the broader and more complex sense of uh, uh, dietetics. The Greek word the idea means way of life, daily habits, and it involves not only elementary habits, but all the human actions that affect the body. So sleeping, washing, doing fitness, having sex, drinking, and eating. But what is very important is that this concept was strictly connected with morality. In ancient times, taking care of one's body was necessary to be a good citizen, a good human in the society. So dietetics was politics. We use this Greek definition because it's not out of step. We are always within some form of diet because dietetics refers to the relationship between, between food choices and ways of living. In, the, in this first section of the chapter, uh, you can find uh, uh, several examples of various dietetic styles um, that can help to understand this passage from the idea, the strict idea of diet to a broader idea of dietetics. And among them, there are the examples of veganism, uh, and also that of slimming diets. They are two totally different uh, dietetic styles, of course, one for ethical reasons, the other for aesthetic or medical ones, but both of them involve food choice, so what to eat or not to eat, but also other aspects of life. So, the, abst the abstention from eating foods of animal origin affects decisions regarding foods, of course, but also clothing, cosmetics, home decoration, leisure time, and other aspects that are not only culinary. The same way, also slimming diets are not simply lists of permitted or forbidden foods, because they involve cooking text, uh, they involve the way we change and we choose different cooking techniques, ways of shopping, choices of ingredients, and other actions that do not strictly fall within the field of food and gastronomy, such as 
the care of the body, fitness, how one dresses and how one organizes uh, time. So, the idea is that being on a diet is a way of being in the world. It's a mental and cultural filter based on different criteria that can be social, aesthetical, medical, political, ethical or religious. And this mental grid gives meaning to what we eat and it contributes to the construction of our social cultural identity. So, uh, to conclude this first section of the chapter, uh, chapter, whilst we usually think of diet as something temporary that we should follow to uh, achieve a particular goal, such as the weight loss, or as a particular alimentary style, in truth, we are always within some form of diet because dietetics, in this broader meaning, uh, refers to the relationship between two choices and ways of living. All this considered, uh, the second section of this chapter is a very short path in the history of dietetics and in the way it transformed through times. As we have said, uh, in the uh, ancient society, uh, the perfect citizen was a man realizing moderation and self-control, self-regulation, in all the pleasures of life, the so-called aphrodisia, food included. And also in modern times, the, uh, for instance, the gentleman of the English society of the 18th century had to show moderation and self-control since they were public men eating and drinking in society. So what is important is that dietetics was a singular part of the whole behavior and the whole actions of a man, both in ancient and modern society. What uh, ancient and modern dietetics have in common is first the value of measure, the idea that the excess too much or too little was a sign of immorality or, or inability to be uh, or to act as a good citizen. Second, the explicit link between food habits, body habits and morality. And third, the idea of the self-regulation. The wise man was the doctor of himself. No one could tell him how to eat or to take care of his body. This was, of course, was because medicine as a structured uh, science was not recognized um, as a scientific expertise like it's, it's nowadays. Today, on the contrary, um, dietetics is dominated by a scientific and medical vision of food and body that is closely linked to physiological and quantitative aspects of eating, so nutri nutrients, calories, and so on. This brings us to discuss the third part of the chapter, that is <coughs> nutritionism, and the idea of dietetics of nutrition, of nutri as nutrition, that is a contemporary idea, and nutritionism uh, set a new point of view on food. Here I explain the origin of this contemporary paradigm and its principles, uh, a paradigm that uh, mm, took place with the emergence of food industry in the uh, second half of the 20th century. And uh, these are the main principles of uh, uh, nutritionism. I here use what Michael Pollan says about it. It's a kind of criticism, uh, that of Pollan. Uh, he says that the nutrients contained in food are more important, important than the food itself. These nutrients are invisible, so Nobody knows where they are and experts have to tell us where to find them or what to eat. And eating is a way of taking care of our physical health. So eating well means eating biologically well. This is a contemporary idea. This is an advert from the 40s. It's an advert of donuts for babies, for children. As you can see, I hope, okay. It says, each donut fortified with a minimum of 25 units of vitamin B1 uh, for pep and vigor. Mm, no taste is, co taste is not considered at all, the question of taste, but the sensoriality, okay. 
but only the fact that this uh, um, kind of food uh, has the capacity to improve the energy levels of the consumers. So it promotes an idea of food as fuel. Of course, it's a, a, a not a vintage uh, advert, but if we take one of the millions of pro products of our supermarkets, uh, like this one, you can see also that uh, uh, calories and other nutrients are in the foreground. So, calories, and it is uh, uh, it, um, aimed at women, created for women, with the addition of iron, vitamin D, protein, and so on. So, despite the distance in time, of course, I know they are very different products and in different contexts, but the basic logic of nutritionism remains almost the same, presenting food from the perspective of their nutritional values. One of the effects of the nutritionism is that uh, um, is the separation between food as cultural and central unit and food as a sum of invisible elements. It's something given nowadays, something we don't usually think about, but uh, it should be highlighted that it is a cultural construction and that the quantitative vision of food is an effect of nutritionism. Another um, interesting aspect regards the fact that maybe foods and other ingredients um, change position and valorization in our mind according to the dominant scientific paradigm of the time. So just think of uh, avocado, fat, o um, fat oils, red meat, and so on, the change according to the last scientific research. Just think of Coca-Cola that was invented and considered for a long time like uh, a drug, because of course the criteria of what, was, of what a drug was were very different of that used today, but it was considered a drug to alleviate physical ailments or to improve sports skills also. And this is the reason why, on the contrary, today Coca-Cola is considered junk food, an unhealthy beverage, the opposite, totally the contrary. And this is the reason why today there is no more one Coke, as you know, this, this is the Italian uh, uh, product line of, co of Coca-Cola, and we have uh, um, different versions of Coca-Cola, with very amounts of sugar in response of in response to the um, demands of consumers who are very careful about what they drink and what they eat and the general wave of healthism. And so this is also the reason why Coca-Cola um, today um, produces a new line of uh, drinks plant-based drinks, suitable also for vegans and vegetarians, only in Europe. Okay. And this is another uh, example, or um, several examples you can find in the chapter, about uh, baby food market, that is uh, um, a field where nutritionism is very, very strong, and brands promote what their products contain, contain or do not contain, according, of course, to the dominant dietetic fashion of time, and that is not considered at all. The, uh, most of the products you can see uh, always what they contain or do not contain, so uh, without milk, without added sugar, no artificial colors and flavors, with iron, whole grain, and so on. Okay, um, about nutritionism, at the end of this section of the chapter, I included the focus on slimming diets, because sl slimming diets uh, are based on the main principle of nutritionism, calories, nutrients, and quantity. But first, I talk about the, the fact that slimming diets are a contemporary phenomenon, because they, are, they reflect aesthetical standards that have changed through times. As we know, physical fatness was a positive sign, was a, a sign of wellness and social prestige in ancient and modern times. And only in the latest centuries, things changed and slimness was preferred by um, wealthy people 
to distinguish themselves from the masses. There is uh, um, these are not about slimming diets. There is an uh, enormous number of slimming diets in circulation, uh, each with its own method, name, co products, manuals, and the whole communicative apparatus behind it logo, advertising, website, social media, and so on. This is just a few number or a list from uh, uh, Italian uh, market of diets, just a few. These are the minimum part of what you can find in a library. If you go in a library, in the section of diets, you find many, many, many lots of diets. And also just look at the internet. Um, because of this enormous number, um, they can be considered as brands in competition because they need to differentiate each other. And what is more important and inter interesting for, this, uh, for our purpose is that even though they are based on the common physiological principles of nutritionism, each diet presents itself to the consumer by focusing on a different advantage. Advantage. And here I show the case of uh, some famous international diets showing how each has its own method, of course, but each diet emphasizes a different idea of food and a different relation with consumers. So, for instance, the American zone diet emphasizes the idea of food as drug and highly medicalized idea of eating and of physical activity. It is called also an anti-inflammatory inflammatory diet. Uh, on the opposite side, Weight Watchers promotes nowadays an idea, an idea of diet closest to everyday eating in people's real lives. And so, the Italian protocol is an Oreca promotes another idea. You can diet another one, and so on. Okay. Uh, all these examples are in the um, uh, chapter with the images. Okay, the last section regards food fashion and trends. Okay. And here, first, I highlight the mm, role of mass media in spreading nutritionist ideology. And, uh, of course, uh, first, uh, there are companies that use advertising to promote their own, their own products with the addition of some nutrients or others, or the elimination of some nutrients or others. And uh, we have also lots of experts, dietitians, doctors, biologists, fitness experts, personal trainers, that use mass media to teach us what is in our food, the negative or positive effects of uh, uh, certain substances on our body. But in this situation, what is very interesting is that we observe two opposite phenomena. At the same time, we have a very strong importance of the figure of the expert in food representation, who are credible and specialized and who uh, represent uh, science, so the truth of food. But on the opposite side, we have a lot of fashion trends and myths on about eating that circulate very quickly through the media, particularly online. The idea of the free from, that also Gianfranco discussed this morning, is connected to this kind of fashion trends and eating uh, myths. Society. But what is important is that it is also the effect, the effect of nutritionism and of the circulation of a scientist culture of food that looks at food in its effect on our bodies. This is the free from uh, uh, line, product line by Sainsbury that we can say it's uh, free from everything, wet free, gluten free, milk free, egg free, soy free. There is nothing. Also, junk food is free, some, free, free from something. No added sugar and salt, the tomato ketchup, and fat free chips. Uh, I close the chapter with the, uh, the case that focus on the gluten-free mania that is an example of this kind of food meats. It implies people who eat no gluten foods 
even though they are not celiac, but because they think gluten can have a negative effect on their body. But here I show how the transformation of the, uh, uh, the um, I show the transformation of the perception of gluten. This is Buitoni, that maybe you can uh, all uh, know, uh, the Italian pasta company that in the first half of the of the 90s promoted one of its key products, the glutinated pasta, specifically aimed at children as a very strong brain activator, something that nowadays can be possible, cannot be possible. And Buitoni, of course, today, the same company sells a bus of, bus of uh, gluten-free and lactose-free products. Okay? Mm. So, totally changed. Um, finally, I show you this campaign that a few years ago was ran, uh, well, the, the Italian Celiac Association ran to fight this fashion for gluten-free, highlighting the risk of such a diet for someone who is not celiac. What is interesting is this, ca this campaign shows, um, demonstrates the existence in society of a conflict between social actors, companies, consumers, institutions, and doctors. So, the ideas we want to highlight with this chapter is first that dietetics is not at all a phenomenon that only affects the body in its physiological sense, but influences and it's influenced by social, tra social trends and individual and coll collective behaviors. Second, as in ancient times, dietetics involves both body and society, physical dimension and cultural dimension, so it's not very different from the past, and that nutritionism is not the only possible point of view on what we eat or what we don't eat, and that nutritionism is a cultural trend uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. That was very nice how you showed us um, these whole changes of spaces of restaurants, and I was thinking that that changes are maybe only possible because we also change the spaces. That means we have two um, mobility, uh, yeah, modality of moving. Um, for example, we have mass tourism and we have mass migration so and according to those modalities we can um, also change the, the, the spaces in, in around ourselves so um, that is very interesting for me for your point where you uh, mentioned local and exotical restaurants and I would always ask um, how does it work how how that depends um, together. For example, when I go as a German tourist to Tunisia, what do I, what do I search or what do I find there as a restaurant? And what, um, as a German citizen in Berlin, do I create and get from Tunisian um, mig migrants? So are there differences in those spaces? What are differences? And that would immediately arise the question about so-called cultural cannibalism or inclusion or exclusion? Uh, for me something that is very uh, uh, poignant is, uh, is the soundscape uh, as well. So I wonder if uh, part of your research was also restaurants that focus on the levels of ac acoustics or the type of uh, uh, music that is played and that they make their promotion based on, uh, on those criteria. La dieta mediterranea che è venuta un presidio dell'UNESCO come stile di vita in, nel contesto di, delle cose che si sono dette come, come viene vista perché unisce stile di vita apprezzamento del cibo e qualità della, della, della nutrizione è ancora attuale very famous and uh, very traditional what in respect of the topic of your chapters uh, how is its interpretation today according to the design and to the are uh, in society but also reflect uh, uh, the changing uh, transformation in society uh, and so clearly food and spaces uh, are connected to this uh, transformation um, what I'd like to say is also that um, 
these uh, uh, typical uh, global and so on are also connected with another discourse that is the touristic discourse uh, so, for example, uh, if I'm Italian, I come here and uh, I look for an Italian restaurant, uh, I'm a bad tourist, uh, whereas uh, if I come here and I look for um, a Bulgarian restaurant, uh, I'm a good tourist. So there is also the image of the tourist, the image of the citizen, the image, uh, and so uh, there are all these roles that uh, we should keep together. And for um, uh, Dario, uh, thank you. Um, in the chapter, you won't find a, a specific uh, a topic on the, uh, uh, on the sound, on the, but uh, it's clearly that uh, going to the restaurant is uh, a um, synesthetic uh, experience. So, for example, in the case of uh, Dan Lenoir, you have uh, cases like this, or there's also the example uh, of uh, a type of restaurant, of a Japanese restaurant, uh, that whose name is uh, Robatoyaki or something similar. Uh, in which uh, is not uh, um, important uh, the uh, sound, uh, um, the sound uh, in terms of music, but for example, one of the um, identitary feature of the restaurant is the room rumor, the fact that you go there, uh, you are uh, um, uh, in a chaos, and this is typical of that restaurant, uh, and is interesting because uh, usually we think uh, that a good restaurant is that uh, where you uh, are calm, quiet, and so on. But uh, there are cases in which the uh, uh, cases uh, in which rumors can become positive, and this is also interesting for me. And uh, last, uh, Maurilio, uh, for a spectacular restaurant. Uh, um, uh, here, um, uh, uh, these are cases in which um, often um, space and food are not connect clearly connected. Just because uh, the, main, uh, um, the main feature should be the space the eccentric, the spectacularity of the spaces uh, and uh, mm, in fact often, often uh, there are places where you go once, not where the, you frequent uh, because they have not uh, a specific uh, 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 culinary identity. It is not considered as a diet in the strict sense, as a way of eating in, in, uh, in the long time. Right. Uh, it's presented uh, as a no diet in the strict sense, but a, a dietetic in the broader in the broader meaning. This is also the reason why it is uh, part of uh, cultural heritage of ba by UNESCO, uh, and it includes also uh, uh, cooking techniques, uh, ingredients, places, uh, uh, and other things that are not only uh, food. Uh, but what is interesting is that uh, also the Mediterranean diet uh, it has been rethinked in uh, a nutritionalist sense. Okay, so it's the perfect diet because it's not a strict diet, but also because it's the perfect diet in a nutritionalist sense. So nutritionism has helped Mediterranean diet to confirm his, uh, uh, its uh, importance and its, uh, its role.